Hello friends, today we will discuss traffic sensors on non-urban roads as given in IRC 9. Traffic sensors is the baseline of transportation engineering and it forms the nucleus in understanding, planning, designing, development, operation and maintenance of road infrastructure. Primarily, traffic sensors is a valuable source of database for various highway planning activities such as reclassification of corridors, allocation of budgets for road maintenance and for road strengthening or widening projects. Traffic sensors also helps in understanding the demand for planning of capacity enhancement, efficiency improvements and safety improvements and also for research purposes. Also, traffic sensors provide data and information that helps in understanding environmental patterns such as air pollution and noise pollution trends, emission trends and dispersion estimates. And therefore, traffic sensors is a mandatory exercise for all highway departments. And there are two methods of traffic sensors. One is manual count, other is automatic count. And there is no distinct difference between the two methods. However, the selection of a method generally depends upon the level of traffic flow and required data quality. Manual method is a good choice for low volume roads and automatic count method can be employed on national highway and state highways. Under the category of automatic counts, there can be several methods like pneumatic tube method, inductive loops method, infrared or laser based vehicle profiler video based classifier and many more and we shall discuss all these methods little later. In the case of manual count, they are done by hiring of numerators. Field numerators appointed for traffic survey should have at least a minimum of 10th standard education to enable them to undertake the exercise with reasonable degree of accuracy. And these numerators will be trained for familiarizing them with vehicle classification process and counting technique. For manual count, a day is divided into three shifts of eight hours each and counting staff is deployed for each shift. The number of staff depends upon the traffic volume and vehicle categories. But real-time cross checks must be conducted by experienced technical supervisor at least twice a day to maintain the quality of manual count. Vehicles are classified into different categories as per requirement of the count. The IRC 9 suggests this type of vehicle classification for the purpose of traffic count. There are a total of 26 categories, but actual number of categories can be based on the purpose of the count. A format of this type is prepared and is provided to the counting staff and they record the number of vehicle passing a point on the road in every 15 meter interval using telemarks. Now this sheet is further extended in the horizontal direction and it includes all categories of the vehicles. And then later on this total is done for every 15 minutes count. In the category of automatic count, now there are two broad categories of traffic counting equipment. One is intrusive. This consists of a data recorder and a sensor placed either on the road or inside the road. Whereas non-intrusive techniques are based on some remote observations. In intrusive devices, we have pneumatic road tubes, piezoelectric sensors, magnetic inductive loops or bending plates. Whereas in non-intrusive devices, we have infrared based passive magnetic, microwave or radar, ultrasonic and passive acoustics, video image detection sensors and manual counts. In case of pneumatic tube detector, road tube is installed perpendicular to the traffic flow direction and when a vehicle or a pair of wheels hits the tube, air pressure in the tube activates the data logger which records the time of the event. The data logger can detect the vehicle direction by recording which tube is crossed first. Advantage of this method is it is cheap and self-contained, easy to deploy in all intrusive systems. 
and it is acceptable technology with acceptable accuracy. Now, disadvantage of this that some units are not counted, means accuracy is not 100%. Tubes are not very durable and the life of tube is less than one month. The tube detectors are not suitable for high flow and high speed roads and also it cannot detect two wheelers correctly. Now this inductive detector loop, it works like a metal detector and they measure change in the field when an object passes over them. Once a vehicle drives over a loop sensor, the loop field changes which allows the detection of the vehicle by the detection device. This, oh, this also a cheap technology, almost every dynamic traffic control system uses ideal data. But the disadvantages are that loops are damaged by utility and street maintenance activities. Ideals with low sensitivity fail to detect vehicles with a speed below a certain threshold and the data supplied to traffic control system have a very low sample rate. Magnetometers are widely used for measuring the earth magnetic field. A magnetic sensor is placed below the top surface of the road and it creates a magnetic field. Now when a vehicle passes through this magnetic field, it causes fluctuations and this fluctuation is used to measure flow and occupancy. A single passive magnetic system can collect the data on flow and occupancy, whereas two magnetometer systems can collect the data on flow, occupancy, vehicle length and speed. But these magnetometers cannot detect stop vehicles since they require a vehicle to be moving to make a change in the magnetic field. The wave motion system is also used to count or to measure weight of the vehicles. It can be based on the change in the voltage or it can be based on change in the strain. When it is change in voltage, it is based on piezoelectric principle. When it is change in the strain, it is based on strain gauge principle or bending beam principle. Now, in case of piezoelectric sensors, they collect data by converting mechanical energy into electric energy. The sensor is mounted in a groove cut into the road's surface. When a car drives over the sensor, it squeezes and causes an electric potential and that creates a voltage signal. In case of bending plate, it contains strain gauges that weighs the axles for passing vehicle based on the strain created by the vehicle. This strain is converted into traffic count data using some calibration parameters. In the category of non-intrusive systems of traffic volume measurement, the first is video image detection system. Now traffic parameters are collected by frame by frame analysis of video images which are captured by roadside cameras. The advantage of this method is that it can capture old desired traffic information like speed, traffic count and even the density. And a permanent visual record can be maintained which can be reviewed and analyzed separately at any time. The disadvantage is that the systems are susceptible to obscure issues like obstructions and performance may be poor in bad weather or in low light conditions. But these data when transmitted through a software, they can tell the category of the vehicle as well as the speed of the vehicle simultaneously. Infrared based automatic vehicle counter and classification system can consist of a transmitter and a receiver. And whenever a vehicle passes through these waves, there is a discontinuity created. And re-establishment of a given beam's continuity is defined as make beam event and break beam event and make beam event forms one count of vehicle. That is how a vehicle is detected. So the working principle is that whenever 
a the wheels of the vehicle interact with the four beams pathways make and break beam events are generated and these are used to detect the vehicle so it requires a transmitter and a receiver and the transmitter will transmit the waves and receiver will receive the waves and these data can be directly monitored through a computer another one is microwave doppler and radar doppler microwave detection devices transmit a continuous signal of low energy microwave radiation at target area and then analyzes the reflected signal and this allows the device to detect the moving vehicle radar is capable of detecting the distance objects and determining their position and speed of the movement the advantage of this method is that it is very accurate easy to install long ranged and multiple detections are also possible and it is not affected by day or night operations the disadvantage is that it is sensitive to spurious returns from the adjacent objects and restrictions on use due to electromagnetic interference with other electronics devices another device in non intrusive category is passive acoustic array sensors now here an array of microphones is used to detect the sound of an approaching vehicle above an ambient threshold level time lags and signal variations between microphone positions are used to determine vehicle location relative to the array and further processing of this data can yield the speed information and possibly the engine type classification of the vehicle also sensor locations based on the purpose the count locations can be categorized into two types permanent count station or temporary count station and these locations are identified based on these criteria permanent count stations are located on major industrial nodes regional corridors connecting major cities production and consumption centers transportation hubs such as seaports airports railway terminals logistic hubs etc and temporary count locations can be on corridors connecting other district centers or potential future development region IRC 9 suggest the choice of locations also the road section where the sensor shall be undertaken shall be 500 meter straight section before and after the count location and no access road from the side and no habitation along the section causing direct access to the road and must be at least 100 meter away from the junction that is the criteria for selection of the location sections to have very little pedestrian or animal traffic and should meet all safety requirements in case the census is undertaken for project feasibility or detailed project report the location shall be near the proposed toll plaza for manual count these sites should have proper provision for safety accommodating the counting staff and proper lighting during night in case of automatic count availability of space for safe installation of equipment and operation is required is the requirement particularly if video based system is used the location should be such that proper recording of traffic data and vehicle images is done number of locations depends upon the purpose purpose of the census and in case the census is undertaken for a project feasibility or preparation of dpr the number of locations can be decided based on the length of a project irc 9 suggests that up to a length of 50 km there should be two locations for traffic sensors and for a project length of 100 km there can be three area then comes frequency and duration of traffic sensors at permanent at permanent count stations traffic census is done 365 days in a year and 24 hours of the day at temporary count station it depends upon the purpose of the count for trend analysis it should be done four times in a year for feasibility report it should be done twice once during feasibility stage and second time before submission of draft detailed project report 
and in case of detailed design stage one time study during designing shall be sufficient each time a census is undertaken it should be done for seven continuous days for 20 hours in both directions quality control and quality assurance of the traffic data is extremely important in the case of manual count this quality is ensured by appointing the numerator for traffic survey who have at least a minimum of 10th standard education so that they are able to undertake the exercise with reasonable degree of accuracy and also field checks by an experienced person at least twice a day will ensure the quality of the data in the case of automatic count counting equipment should be installed at a location so that the same does not become obstruction or distraction to the traffic counting equipment shall be properly enclosed in a cabinet and protected from vandalism adequate power backup system at site equipment calibration before start of every census in line with the process stipulated by the manufacturer and the same shall be checked and verified by the officer in charge of the authority adequate data storage should be available in the system and in case video based system is deployed adequate lighting shall be made available at the site to ensure proper recording of data to facilitate count and classify the vehicle these are some of the steps suggested in irc 9 for maintaining the quality of the traffic census data so friends thank you very much for watching this video you can suggest you can write your comments in the comment box